Hello, my name is Julianne Christian Sharber. I am the teaching director for Buffalo Community Bible Study. Today we are discussing Lesson 12, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, or 10 through 24. Prepare for battle. Paul describes Christians' true enemies and the right armor to wear when facing them. Let us pray. Father and Lord, today I come before you to pray about the setbacks in our lives. We seem to be fighting an uphill battle. So I come to you in prayer. Fill us in abundance with the power of your Holy Spirit and bless us with your divine restoration. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I ask that any evil working against our lives be defeated immediately by the Holy Spirit. I claim the power of your saving blood. I declare victory over my life and all that I do to serve you, Lord. May all my words be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's put on the whole armor of God. In chapter 6, verses 10 through 12, Paul describes the rigors of conflict. Spiritual warfare is a popular subject for movies, books, lectures, and preaching. Unfortunately, many believers are casualties to Satan's schemes. Make no mistake, whether you are aware of it or not, all Christians are engaged in a very spiritual battle between two opposing kingdoms. Spiritual warfare is the battle for control over people's souls. Those who do not recognize the assailant are generally the first casualties. Fatigue, anxiety, stress, temptation, fear, despair, lies, and revenge. Sound familiar? These are some of Satan's favorite schemes for eroding our faith in God. He wants us to believe that our situation is hopeless and that we are defeated. The best way to ward off Satan's enticements is to know the scriptures. They teach us how to withstand the enemy's ploys by giving us a glimpse of his character, tactics, and purpose. Satan is a murderer. We read in John 8, verse 44, Jesus says to unbelievers, You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. Satan is a liar. Continuing in John chapter 8, verse 44, Jesus describes Satan's deception. The devil does not stand in truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is the father of lies. Satan is a predator. 1 Peter 5, 8 states, Your adversary, the devil, 
walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. There's a saying, if the devil can't make you bad, he'll make you busy. He will distract you to focus on all the things that don't matter. Distractions are the enemy of greatness. Focus on what matters most. Knowing these facts about our enemy. Why do we fall for his entrapments? Satan creates all kinds of distractions to keep us from reading our Bibles, attending church, and praying. He waits for moments of weakness and tells us that we are alone in the struggle. Worry fills our heart, fear and anxiety tempt us to believe his lies. The Apostle Paul calls Christians to take a firm position in the spiritual battle against Satan. Whether confronting Satan's efforts to distrust, distrust God, forsaking obedience, producing doctrinal confusion and falsehood, hindering service to God, bringing division or living worldly. The believer's armor is our defense. The devil wouldn't be attacking you so hard if there wasn't something holy inside of you. Thieves don't break into empty houses. Satan will do anything to keep us from the truth that Jesus defeated him at the cross, Colossians 2.15, and that we can overcome his schemes, Ephesians 6.11. Let's put on the full armor of God. In chapter 6, verses 13 through 17, Paul speaks of the requirements of armor. Thankfully, Paul presents us with a self-defense course in Ephesians chapter 6. Jesus equips us with six dimensions of spiritual armor. Jesus is our truth, our righteousness, our peace, the object of our faith and the source of our salvation, and the living word of God. When we put on Christ, we are protected by our living God. Paul, being chained to a Roman guard, was familiar with the equipment of a soldier. He uses the equipment as an illustration of our weapons in Christ. First, the belt of truth. The soldier's belt served as a foundation for his armor holding his sword and his breastplate. Because Satan is the father of lies, he cannot stand against the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth in John 14, 6. Victory in spiritual warfare starts with the truth. Second, the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate guarded the heart, the source of the soldier's life. Righteousness protects the spiritual life of a Christian. Our righteousness comes not from ourselves, 
but from but from Christ. Philippians 3:9. 3. Feet were protected by the gospel of peace. We read that in Ephesians 6, 15. A soldier's heavily armored sandals gave him traction and security in the heat of the battle. Our peace with God through Jesus Christ gives us security in the face of Satan's accusations. Philippians 4, 7. The shield of faith. The soldier's leather-covered shield could be soaked in water to extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. Faith in God's promises extinguishes the lies of Satan. Proverbs 30, verse 5, and 1 John, chapter 5. Verse 4, the helmet of salvation. The armored helmet protected the soldier's brain. The primary battlefield in spiritual warfare is a Christian's mind. Assurance of salvation defeats the doubts that Satan uses to attack us. We read that in John chapter 10 verse 28 and the sword of the spirit the word of god paul noted that noted only one offensive weapon the soldier's sword when jesus was tempted in the wilderness he used the word of god to defeat satan Note that Satan also uses the word of God, but he doesn't use it completely. Satan will twist the word to cause doubt and confusion. So it is vital that we know God's word completely and in context. The better you know the Bible, the easier it is to detect Satan's lies. A study of the Old Testament reveals that when the armies of Israel fought in their own strength, they always lost. But when they cast themselves upon God's mercy, victory always followed. Christians need the full armor of God to defeat Satan. We cannot choose one piece of equipment over another, but we must be proficient in using every piece. Put on your armor and trust God for your victory. A praying Christian is a constant threat to the stability of Satan's government. The Christian is a holy rebel loose in the world with access to the throne of God. Let's put on the whole armor of God. In Ephesians, Chapter 6, verses 18 through 24, Paul discusses the responsibility of prayer. He who kneels before God can stand before anyone. Oftentimes I pray in the car or as I carry on my daily activities. But there are times in which we need to be totally immersed in prayer without distractions. It is important to take regular prayer time alone with God. Many times Jesus with, withdrew from situations in order to be totally immersed in prayer to the Father. 
when Jesus learned of his cousin, John the Baptist, being beheaded by Herod, Jesus withdrew to spend time with his father. And before Jesus started his public ministry, he spent 40 days in the desert in prayer and fasting in preparation for his ministry. Jesus used prayer and fasting as a tool for his spiritual warfare. The devil must have felt threatened by what Jesus was doing, given the effort he went to to distract Jesus from his mission. Jesus spent many hours on his knees in prayer, agonizing and, prep and preparing for his crucifixion in the Garden of Gethsemane. Prayer is not a backup plan. Prayer is the battle plan. Jesus wants us to have peace and clarity for our spiritual battles. After Jesus was raised from the dead, he appeared to his closest friends and followers. They were fearful and confused. They did not know what would happen to them as they were surrounded by their enemies, the Jewish authorities. Jesus understood their fears. He understood the spiritual battles that they would be facing. Jesus told them that their greatest source of strength, his own spirit, would indwell them. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And we read about this in John chapter 20, verses 21 through 22, NIV. Jesus' own Spirit, the Spirit of God, the power that resurrected Jesus from the dead lives with every lives within every believer as you experience spiritual warfare know that god is working within you guiding your thoughts and your actions providing everything you need to live as his child the whole armor of god is a picture of jesus christ he is our truth. He is our righteousness and our peace. His faithfulness makes possible our faith. Jesus is our salvation, and he is the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Let's pray. Father Lord, I claim victory over all spiritual warfare in my life. For my Savior, Jesus Christ, has already won the war. Jesus has defeated Satan. Remind me daily that when I face difficulties, sickness, and fears, that Jesus Christ will carry me through all adversities. Praise your name, Lord Jesus Christ. I put on the full armor of God, and all God's people said, Amen. 
Our challenge is, will you choose to stand firm and daily put on the whole armor of God? Merry Christmas, and God bless you and yours. We will take our Christmas break and resume classes on January 11th, 2024. We will start our new book, Ruth and Samuel. Please do lesson one and two in Ruth for our discussion on January 11th.